I'm going to try and get this review done in seven minutes. Let's make Robert proud. Hello people, welcome to the final part of my Equalizer reviews. I reviewed the first two films in the trilogy. I'll leave the link to those reviews in the description. Today, we're talking about the latest release, The Equalizer 3. Once again directed by Anton Fuqua and once again starring Denzel Washington along with Dakota Fanning once again reuniting with her since Man on Fire. Robert McCall has gone to Italy where he's found a peaceful life but the Mafia is ruining everything and of course he has to avenge the citizens. Now I was excited to see Equalizer 3, I was excited to see how they would end off the trilogy. I'm hoping it would be satisfying. I have to say that is a satisfying ending, The Equalizer 3. Not as good as one, it's better than two, but it's still a very solid movie. It doesn't really improve on anything over the first Equalizer, but it never hits the lows of the second one. It's just right bang in the middle of quality between these two films. But one thing that I really think it improves on both films is the runtime. We actually have an Equalizer movie that's around 100 minutes. And while some parts could have been cut out still, the pacing was so much better with this film. I kept saying that the first two equalizers didn't need to be over two hours long. They're about 100 minute movies pretty much that they need to be. And this one fit that time slot very well. Even though, as I said, some parts should have been cut out a little bit. But the film's story is engaging. I do like the fact that Robert has now found peace. Well, supposedly found peace. In this Italian town, the citizens are all really nice and everything. He seems like he's at peace, but... The Mafia is ruining everything, and you really do feel for the citizens of this town. If anything, the town is a character in itself, because you just really hate what the Mafia does to them. These are easily the most hateable villains. They do the most cruel things to the town. They are horrible, they have no mercy, and you just really want Robert to defeat them. However, I will say they are the least threatening villains. Whenever they're fighting Robert, they just get taken down like that. So they don't really pose a challenge to him and it just drains a lot of the tension in the action scenes to be honest. And leading on to the action scenes, for the final movie in the trilogy, you expect your final battle to be this epic thing. Not the most over the top thing, but very satisfying and well done. Unfortunately, we, we didn't get that. I do appreciate the fact they tried to do something different with a final battle and not like... Oh, big bad guy versus good guy, you know, he defeats him at the last minute on the over-the-top way. I'm glad they didn't do that, but I, I don't know, I, I just want a little bit more than what was produced, to be honest. However, the action scenes are still really entertaining. I was surprised to see how little they were. There was not much action in this film at all. But it's all performed well. Denzel did, I think, most of his own stunts. In fact, probably all of his own stunts in this film. The director, well... And the editing is so much better. In fact, I think the direction and editing of the entire film is probably the best in the series. The opening scene is just all one long take. It's really cool how we did it. And also there's just some really good camera movements and shots throughout the entire movie. I don't want to get too much into spoilers, but there's this really cool shot where the camera goes up and it like spins around and keeps going up until the final like moment. Uh, it's really cool how they did that. And there were certain mo moments like that that were really cool to look at. But of course, the main thing that everyone loves about these movies is Denzel Washington as Robert McCall. He's great in this. In fact, I like how they changed his personality a little bit. He's a lot more energetic and fun and lighthearted in this film, which I really like. They kind of drain away the dark and gritty side of him. Still a bit of him in there, but still a lot more lighthearted. And Dakota Fanning is in this film too. They're reunited after Man on Fire. And she's great in this. Her and Denzel have some really strong chemistry. It's really great to see them back on the screen with each other. However, I do think her character was a little bit underused. Her character doesn't really do much to affect the overall story. And if I'm being honest, she was completely absent during the third act. She could have been utilised really well in that. But she's still a likeable character. And you like what happens at the end to her. But despite its faults, The Equalizer 3 is a very solid conclusion to the trilogy. I really do like this trilogy. I think it's really solid to really great moments. If you like the first two films, I do not think you will hate this movie at all. I think you will pretty much love it. I can see why people think it's the best one, and that's fine. I liked it. My dad seemed to like it, who I went with. 
we both had a great time with this movie. And I'm going to give it the same score as the first film, 6.5 out of 10. But yeah, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this video and this little mini-series. What are your thoughts on Equalizer 3 and the other films in the trilogy? Always love to hear your thoughts. But I hope you all enjoyed this video. Have a good day. See you later.